Hey friends, I am back with another fun little creative process video. Um, and this one is actually how I paint um, a floor or a deck. So this is actually one of my most frequently asked questions I get. I get lots of questions, but I definitely get asked a lot about the process, the supplies, um, all the different aspects that go into actually painting on a floor or a deck. And I'm going to share that with you guys. This was actually filmed for my class called Paint Your World, which is a, like a mural painting class, a class where you can um, paint all kinds of different things. So I actually pulled this video and thought it'd be fun to share kind of a shorter version of it with all of you here with the hope to maybe inspire you, not necessarily to go out and paint your deck right now, but to really look at um, your surroundings and your space, your home, your furniture, whatever it may be, as a surface for creativity and painting or design. So I'm going to walk you through some of my steps um, with the hope that you can maybe take something away from this. So when it comes to preparation and supplies, um, I think the first thing to keep in mind is this is going to be different for everybody. This video I'm actually actually working at my parents' house on their deck, which had just been sanded down and then painted. And then they asked for um, a rug painting on that deck. So you just have to be really mindful about the surface you're working on. It may require prep. It may not. It may be old and you can just cover it with paint. That is something that's going to differ from situation to situation. But I always, always, when I am working on anything outdoors, I always either use deck paint or or outdoor paint that is made for the weather and the elements. Um, when you're working inside, you can really mess around with those supplies, but when you're outside, you want things to last over time. You don't want them to peel off. So for this project, I'm actually using outdoor, heavy duty outdoor paint, and I picked a couple of colors. Um, this particular floor rug is going to be shades of blue. So I picked three or four shades of blue, and then I like mixing other shades just to get lighter and darker versions. But for me, I don't care about the brand. I don't have something particular I use. I just head to my local home improvement store and have them mix me up the colors that I'm looking for, for my deck paintings or those outdoor murals and paintings. For this particular project, my mom asked for a really large painted rug in different shades of blue with just any floral design. So what you're going to notice in this video is I didn't draw it out with a pencil or chalk. I really, really enjoy, call me crazy, working off the top of my head. So I basically just sketched it out in paint. Um, I like to treat all of my surfaces just like a canvas. I have fun with it. I play around with it. I mess something up and then I paint over it. Um, for me, it's just not precious. I'm not stressed out. There are a million different ways you could get your design onto a surface. You could project it. Um, you could sketch it out. But for me, those ways, they just don't work with my brain. I really enjoy working um, intuitively off the top of my head freehand um, and just making changes as I go paint is so forgiving if you make a mistake you can kind of paint over it and alter that area but I really enjoy the creativity that comes along with kind of working through problems as I get things down on that surface once I've got my basic design mapped out um, I then fill everything with color color is so important to me and this stage I'm not gonna lie it's a little boring for me because it's just simply about filling those spaces and those shapes in with color and I get I get a little I get a little buggy when I'm doing this just because it doesn't feel as creative for my brain but the one thing I'm always aware of is contrast I'm really wanting to create some pop in my surface I do this with all my art I completely think in contrast if there's something dark I'm gonna put something light over the top of it or next to it and vice versa so this initial stage of just kind of mapping out my colors getting them down um, it's quite much monotonous and quite time consuming, but I'm really setting myself up for once this dries, I have the ability to really go back in and add more pops of color and then tiny embellishments and details, which really elevates um, a pattern or a design or a painting this large. And as far as time goes, this stage, um, these clips that I've smushed together for you guys, this stage took me a good solid day from the morning to the end of the day. And I chose a sunny 
time of year to do this because drying time is really important. Um, you don't want rain coming if you've got fresh paint on an outdoor surface. Um, but for me, this took me a good day. And I'm going to be really honest with you guys. This kind of process when you're working on a floor or a deck, um, it's really hard on your knees and your body. I like to kind of plan out my time where I'll spend a good solid day on a layer, getting color down, and then give it time to dry for a day or two and then go back into it. Um, it's good for the paint um, to give it time to dry before you keep going into it with layers and layers, but it's also good for your body to just take a little bit of a breather because too much of this for too long um, can quickly just beat up your back and your neck and those knees. And once that layer dried and I gave it a day, I think I gave it a day to dry and just take a break, um, this is when things get fun for me. And this is when I go back in and I start adding lots of line work, lots of details, lots of layers. Um, it looks okay right now. Right now it looks like just basic simple fields of color, but really quickly through the use of lines and being really aware of, of what kinds of lines you use. Fine lines, dark lines, bold lines, layering color, really creating pop within the colors you choose. Really quickly you can create a surface that feels super embellished and really elevated. So while it looks really simple right now, I know that as I start adding layers, as I start adding different types of lines, um, things are going to change really quickly and feel incredibly detailed and really embellished. So what you're seeing me do though is start to paint in some of those areas with contrasting colors. So again, you guys, contrast is number one in my brain. So if at any point as I'm working my way across the surface, something feels too plain, too simple, um, too white or too dark, I will go back into those spaces and start adding shapes and larger fields of color. I will eventually layer over the top with lots of fine lines, those details and embellishments. And again, this is actually my favorite part of the process because it really quickly comes alive in a fun and a unique way. Um, I get bored just painting straight color and shapes, but if you gave me a teeny tiny brush and set me free doing lines and details and embellishments, that's when I feel most creative and inspired and it's a ton of fun but um, it's also a ton of work. So you guys are gonna notice with a large surface, not only does it require tons of paint, it's really hard on your body. It's actually pretty good exercise, but it's a lot of time. So fine lines on a piece of paper or a small canvas are gonna take you, it's gonna be really quick, but in a large surface like this, everything takes longer. It takes um, more paint on that brush to get clean, crisp lines. It takes more mind mindfulness and thought into how you get that paint on there. So oftentimes I like using larger supplies than I normally would to fill in areas and um, add those details and embellishments. But at this point, it is just me working my way across that surface, literally going from flower to flower, adding the details and embellishments for each of them. And again, this is a process I didn't plan out. I just work off the top of my head because this is just what makes me happy and it's when I feel the most creative. So again, don't feel pressure to do things my way. If you're going to approach a project like this, um, you might need to map it out, draw it out, plan it out. But for me, I like to work intuitively and play around with that surface and just work my way across it. And you will notice really quickly, just with those lines embellishments, things really transform and look completely different. So the last thing I wanna share with you guys as you watch me finish this up is the fact that I do not seal this. I get this question a lot, and that is because I am using deck paint or outdoor paint, which is made for the elements. So all decks and surfaces are gonna require different things, but for me, because I'm using deck paint, um, I don't need to do anything after this is done. And this particular deck painting is going on a little over a year and a half Half and it's doing just fine with all the elements that go along with living at the Oregon coast. So with all that said, I hope you guys enjoyed a peek into this process. I hope maybe something in this video inspires you to look at your home or your floor or your wall or some furniture as a place to get creative and express yourself so you can add some art to your surroundings.